Hi there, Make Beer here. Um, unfortunately, I haven't been making beer. Uh, you know, you'd think um, that uh, uh, the price of making beer would have uh, dropped uh, with all these deflationary uh, pressures going on around the world, the rising dollar, etc. However, I found that the cost of uh, the home uh, beer kits, which I like to use because, you know, the, the time savings associated with it, have gotten prohibitively expensive. And in addition to that, they're harder to come by, which uh, doubles as a, as a, as a deterrent. Um, so I, though, had, um, you know, basically had a yen again to throw together a beer. And I saw a recipe uh, basically uh, coming from Cooper's Brewery that described a, a, a beer that I'm interested in. Um, when I put together the uh, individual component costs or ingredient costs that I, I would have to pay, uh, based on the actual uh, distribution system that exists now for finding those products, I found that it would cost me 80 some dollars to make the beer um, after shipping costs, etc. So, uh, having said that, when I go to my grocery store, and this would be producing approximately two and a half cases of beer, right? But having said that, when I go to my grocery store and I would find something uh, like the Deschutes uh, uh, um, Brewery beer uh, for $14.99 a case, or I mean a 12-pack, which would equal uh, basically five times uh, $15, uh, $75, about the same price, I decided, oh, good Lord. Why would anybody want to put together a beer when I can go down to the grocery store and pick up a beer for <laughs> the less than the price of waiting uh, five weeks, six weeks, eight weeks, whatever? I hate to say that, but you know, I like to I like to make my own beer. But anyway, so I had in my refrigerator, you know, um, uh, my office fridge here. And uh, my storage, I have, you know, a few cans of old Cooper's extract, Cooper's hopped beer kits, which have been sitting around. And I decided, let, let me let me just throw one together just for old time's sake. So that's what I did. And also, I happen to have um, in my freezer um, some uh, homegrown hops that I produced last year, the Centennial hops, rhizomes that I own in the uh, uh, Willamette hop rhizomes. And I had a fairly good crop, so I put those together. Um, in addition to the, what I used was the uh, Cooper's Pilsner uh, beer kit. Um, I didn't use the uh, yeast included because it's a lager yeast. So I picked up Safale 05 and um, then I also went to my local homebrew supply store. I picked up uh, about uh, 1.5 kg or you know, uh, three pounds, three and a half pounds of uh, amber malt extract and uh, a pound of, uh, of uh, dry malt extract, I believe. And um, then I used my own hops. So my cost after that, of course, because I had the can laying around, um, was about 15 to 16 dollars. Big difference over doing the mail order, uh, paying the shipping costs, finding all these uh, uh, things. Not, not that I'm cheap or anything, but you know, I mean, if you're saying like, well, you know, uh, I just yeah, anyway, so <laughs> now let's get to the point. It, was, it looks like it's a good beer again, it's you know, and I've got you know, kegs and stuff like that. So bottling or kegging, whatever, will be easy for me. Um, I'm pretty excited about that. And uh, since I have a few more older cans of Coopers, I'll probably put those together as well. Um, not to say that I, you know, will, won't be a Coopers customer, you know, uh, uh, ever again, but uh, if it continues to be difficult to find, 
Um, I'll have to find different ways to uh, make beer or maybe not make beer at all. Um, kind of sad. I, you know, had my d- time with it. Um, I think it's a, it's a good product. It uh, has a huge amount of potential. But, uh, you know, if here's where I have the beer. It's in a, a closet in my basement right now. Um, and uh, as you can see, I have uh, uh, added some additional hops for dry hopping. These are Willamette hops. I just threw them on top and um, I'm going to siphon into my keg in about uh, uh, five days or so. So pretty excited. I, uh, so far, I haven't taken a, a, a little sip yet of the beer, but uh, we'll see. Um, everything seems to be proceeding nicely. The The Safale doesn't uh, drop out of um, as quickly as the Cooper's yeast. Um, I guess the term proper term is flo- flocculate. Um, for those who are into the technical aspects of the yeast. Uh, however, uh, I, you know, I could bring it into the keg in, in time and just let it drop to the bottom of the keg over time. So we'll see what happens. Uh, that's, that's where I am with that right now. Okay, so I got inspired and I decided, okay, I am going to taste a sample. Like I said, it's been one week. So I, I poured it out of the spigot. That's the nice thing about this fermenter. And I will give this one a shot. As you can see, it's a little, a little murky. I just, again, I, I guess I'm curious. So the last piece before I sign off, I, um, I got a lot of hops I still want to use. Um, I've got uh, uh, some hops growing. It's uh, now May 6th, and uh, this particular bind is really going up. Um, I'll be making some more beers. I've got like three three cans of Cooper's Lager left and I'll probably be using them along with the uh, uh, Centennial hops that I have and Willamette hops and just kind of playing along with that. Maybe adding some liquid malt extract and some dry malt. But yeah, why not? I'll, I'll use up the cans. It's, it's uh, it's all good stuff. But I'm, I'm just uh, uh, the hobby's gotten too expensive for me. Thinking, gonna scale it back. Cheers for now.